Namaste yogis. Welcome to my YouTube channel and welcome to this morning's practice, a yin yoga practice focusing on the immune system. So a little immune system boosters in our postures, a little thymus tapping, the thymus tapping, what that will do will um, help to uh, speed up the maturation of white blood cells and the production of those. So you can do the thymus tapping that we're going to do. Um, any time of the day, uh, I would not suggest it an hour or so before bed because it can be very energizing. Um, and a lot of postures we're going to do today will open through the heart area and the thymus area. So relax, get ready to flow, practice with me. We're not actually going to flow, but we're going to go from one posture to the other. And this is my little... Pound Cyrus, he might be joining us for a few postures today. So let's just root the sitting bones. Maybe you reach back and peel the flesh away from the sitting bones to root them and get your spine nice and long and roll the shoulders up back and down a few times. So good, bring the shoulder blades against the back ribs as they slide down. All right, and then just drop the shoulders, press the heart forward just a little bit. And then take your two peace fingers and find your sternal notch. It's just that little notch at the base of your throat. And then slide your index finger down about an inch. And then take three fingers and just start to tap there in that bony um, place. The thymus gland is right underneath there. And the thymus gland is not only um, responsible for our immune system, but it's also going to be a place where when you tap, um, you can release some anxiety or fears or anything like that. So take just a few um, breaths here. Make sure you're breathing in and out the nose as you tap the thymus. Notice if it elicits any response. Maybe you feel relaxed a little bit more. Let's just do that for three more breaths. Bring your palms and ground your palms. So face down with the palms, close your eyes, take a couple breaths and just notice. Inhale. As you exhale, flutter the eyes open, roll the shoulders up back and down a couple more times. Just bind your arms behind you, press the heart forward, Drop your chin slightly towards the chest. You're not forcing your chin in any way, it's just a natural drop. And then just allow your chin to follow the smile of your collarbone from side to side. Feeling a little stretch through the neck. And then bring that chin back to center. Raise the chin back up, a nice neutral gaze, and take those fingers over to the right side. Draw that right elbow back, press the heart forward once again, and grow tall through the spine. Now as you press the right shoulder and the left shoulder down, they're nice and even, just drop your head. First, bring the right ear towards the right shoulder. Feeling a stretch through the left shoulder, the left side of the neck. Make sure you're breathing. Keep the breath calm. And allow that shin just to start to tuck towards the armpit. You're not bringing the chin to the armpit. It's just the gaze is more down towards that right side. And now bring the gaze back to neutral. Release to center, so neutralize between sides, press the heart forward, draw the fingertips towards the earth, and then let's go to the other side. Draw the uh, bound fingers to the left hip, draw that left elbow in. Okay. Both shoulders are in line, so we don't have one higher than the other. Now just drop the left ear. Oh, this side feels so much tighter. Um, towards the left shoulder, left ear towards the left shoulder. And breathe. And 
Start to drop that chin, the gaze towards the left armpit. Bring the chin back to neutral. Bring the arms back one more time. Open up. And then exhale. Plant your palms face down. Let's do just a couple seated cat and cows. We don't like to stimulate the muscles in a yoga class, in a yin yoga class. We want the muscles to remain cool so we can get to the deeper tissues. So that's what you work in a um, yin yoga class is the deeper tissues such as the fascia, ligaments, joint capsules. So press the heart forward, gaze maybe up slightly, and then exhale into your seated cat pose. Press the palms into the thighs, tuck your chin, dome the spine. Start to move with your breath, inhaling into your seated cow, exhaling into your seated cat. Do that a couple more times. Inhaling and exhaling. Sit bones are rooted. And then come back to neutral. Let's raise those arms up. Take a nice big breath in. And as you exhale, one little baby twist, left hand to right thigh, right arm behind you. And as I look over to my right, I notice I have some props today. So grow your spine long with an inhale. And then as you exhale, just breathe into your twist. You can have a couple blocks, a blanket. I have a bolster, but I don't think I'm going to use it today. It's just there in case. So arms all the way up. Reach up and all the way over to the other side for your seated twist. Right palm to left thigh, left fingers behind you, creating that length in your spine. So if you don't, you have a blanket or a large beach towel, that'll work. Don't worry if you don't have blocks. Maybe getting them at some point for your yoga practice. Inhale the arms up. All right, and then exhale all the way down. So let's go ahead into our first yin yoga pose, which is supported fish. So if you don't have blocks, roll up your um, beach towel and you're going to, or your blanket and you're going to place that under your shoulders. So for supported fish, I'm going to have two blocks. One, the one block is going to go along, if you had a bra, the bra line underneath your shoulder blades. So you don't want to rest the block on your shoulder blades. You want to bring it down a little bit. And then the, Last block is for your head. It can be on level three, two, or one. I like mine on level one. I like a little bit of a throat opener. And how you come in and how you come out is very important. So you never want to sit up. So I'm going to come into it and come out. If you know your supported fish, go ahead in. So I'm going to wiggle around until I get that block just right. And it feels good right there. So I'm going to come out. To come out, you would Bend your knees in and then roll into a fetal position. Never, ever, ever sit straight up out of this. After you're in your fetal position, you can draw the belly in and press yourself up to come out. So you always want to come out of your poses safely. Most injuries in yoga happen when we exit a pose incorrectly. All right, so let's go in. We're gonna hold the poses today, anywhere from uh, one to uh, five minutes now. Mine will mostly be shorter today, so if you want to actually hold any of these postures longer, just hit the pause button and hold as long as you want. You know, sometimes the imposes are held up to 20 minutes. So, so some of the rules of a yin yoga practice are to find your edge, meaning you haven't pushed too far, but you've pushed far enough. You don't want sharp and joyous pain, but you want to feel a deep stretch. The second rule or top va is to find stillness. So you want to find stillness. So wiggle around in your supported fish here until you can find stillness. Try to externally rotate those palms to the sky to open the shoulders a little more. Open through that thymus area, the heart center where the sternum is. And the last rule, the last top va is to remain for a time. And we remain for a time because it takes a long time to stress, correctively stress those deeper tissues, the joints, capsule, ligaments, 
fascia. Make sure you're finding that stillness. starts to wander, which it will over and over again. It's just part of the human um, ways to let our minds run. But if the mind does run to those to-do lists, what happened yesterday, what's going to happen tomorrow, just bring your awareness back to the breath. And practice some deep four count breaths. Inhaling for the count of four. And exhaling for the count of four. to start exiting the pose by bending my left knee, placing my left foot on the earth, bending my right knee, placing my right foot on the earth, drawing my belly and very gently rolling to my right side into a fetal position off my blocks. Resting my right ear on my right bicep. And I'm gonna take the blocks out from behind. Once I do that, I'm gonna roll onto my back. Hugging the knees into the chest, so that was the back bend as well. Back bends are on blocks, a little intense, so just rock side to side a couple times. Just massage out the back. And then keeping that right knee in, send the left leg long, left heel on the earth if you can get there. If you need a little bend in the knee, you can just stay right here with a bent knee pavana, but try to lengthen there. You're gonna feel a stretch through the left hip flexor, you're going to compress through the right hip here. Bhana Mektasana or wind relieving pose. I'm tucking my elbows in, lowering that um, left shoulder. You can flex the feet and make them active or you can relax. Just take a breath or two. Big inhale, let's twist with the exhale, left palm to right thigh, right arm out like a wing and then just roll. If you're rolling into your twist, you're not allowing that right shoulder to pop up, it's just a little twist here. Maybe your gaze is up, maybe your gaze is towards the right. All right pull the belly in and roll that right hip down, coming into a supine pigeon. Cross the right ankle over the left knee. You can stay here with the left foot on the earth using that right hand to press the knee away, or you can draw that left thigh in, interlacing over the thigh or over the shin, tucking your chin. I like to use my right elbow to press my right knee away a little further, opening through that right hip. So you're gonna feel that in the hip, that's your target area. Make sure you're breathing, relax the shoulders as much as you can. Take a stretch between sides. And then I bring the knees into the chest one more time, hug them in. And left knee stays in, right leg goes long, right heel on the earth. Keep the bend in the knee and stay in Pavana if that's where your body is today. Flex the toes. You can relax the toes, draw the shoulders even, shoulder blades against the mat. Tuck the chin slightly. 
feeling that stretch here through my right hip flexor, just a slight stretch, and I'm compressing through the left hip. Let's turn that into a twist. Right palm to left thigh, left arm out like a wing, keeping the left shoulder on the earth and then twist. Maybe your gaze goes to the left. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and roll onto our back, hugging those knees into the chest. If you hear a little bit of what sounds like a dog growling. My dog is snoring behind me, so sorry about that. All right, let's do some knee circles here just to get the synovial fluid through those hips. When my dog um, dreams, sometimes he snores really loud. It sounds like he's growling. It's funny. All right, hug the knees in and roll to your right. Use your left palm to press yourself up. All right, so we're gonna go right into an Anahatasana heart melting pose. Hair out of the way. The only thing I would suggest if your knees are sensitive, you could roll your mat up and place your knees on the rolled mat for your Anahatasana. But if your knees are okay, let's go right into it. So my knees are underneath my hips, my feet are behind my knees. I start to walk my palms out forehead to the earth. Now, if you're more like this, you want to place a blanket or a block underneath your forehead. So the forehead is down, I'm getting a stretch through the shoulders, the chest, the upper back. And like I said, one of the tattvas of yin yoga is to remain, to remain for a time and sometimes in a pose like this or another one that might be a little bit more difficult for you, that's really hard to do. Just to hold it. If you're feeling this deep, intense stretch, but for changes to take effect in those deeper tissues, we must remain for that time through the discomfort and the difficulties. We also must respect that we haven't pushed too far, but we're pushing far enough to feel that discomfort. And that's where the change takes place. That's where we can grow, where we can evolve. When we allow the discomfort to slowly dissipate. Remember if that mind is wandering, bring it back to it. Four count in and four count out breath. Follow the inhale. Notice the pause at the top of the inhale and then follow the exhale. Making sure you exhale all the air out before you ask for that next inhale. want a little bit of extra here without moving your hips. You can bring the palms together for the last minute and draw the thumbs to the shoulders, bending the elbows. But if that's not in your practice, just keep the arms long. Lengthen the arms out if you have the elbows bent. You start to slide yourself back into a modified hero's bow. Hips to the heels, arms down by your side, palms face up, and just release out. And 
notice any tingling in the arms. Notice the flow through the shoulders. And press yourself up nice and slowly. Notice any achiness dissipating through those shoulders. It's very normal to feel achiness after coming out of um, a long held posture like that. So let's go into a Sphinx pose. Um, let's leave our blocks for now. Let's just come into a traditional Sphinx pose. Roll yourself onto your belly. Okay. And you don't have to bring the toes and heels together like in a yang practice. So this is yin. So just allow the tops of the feet to rest on the earth. Your feet are maybe hip distance apart. And if you notice my elbows underneath my shoulder, I press my heart through the gateway of the shoulders, the upper arms, and I press the ears away from the shoulders. So a nice lift there. Okay. All right. We're going to hold, so this target area is for the low back, kidney meridians, the low back. This is especially nice if you get a little achiness in that low back. Make sure you're breathing. This is a back bend, so we tend to hold our breath in back bends. We've got to keep our kidneys healthy. That's part of my immune system yin sequence because the kidneys hold our jing, our life force, our life energy, um, and we need to keep them in the low back very healthy. Healthy spine, healthy life. Mr. Iyengar says that and he is one of my um, teachers and my lineage of teachers is Iyengar. Four counts in, four counts out. Now, if this is feeling really good, you can pause the button, hit the pause button. But if you're ready to move on to seal pose with me, I'm gonna take my hands, bring them to the corners of the mat and externally rotate them a little bit and then lengthen my arms long. Again, the shoulders are away from the ears. Your gaze is neutral. You're feeling this a little bit deeper in that low spine. I'm gonna hold for about a minute here. Again, you can hold it as long as you want. I'm just your guide. Your body's your teacher. Your body's asking for more, then give it more. Hold the poses longer. down gently bending those elbows coming into crocodile pose notice the achiness in that low back as you release back your palms forehead on the back of the palms or wherever feels good and to further release sometimes i like to bend my knees and sway my feet side to side myself up back into a quick child's pose that feels really nice to release out the back and while we're here why don't we go ahead and thread the child's because that just feels nice i'm going to take my right arm and tuck it underneath my right shoulder right ear to the earth my left fingertips are reaching long
for a moment or two. I'm gonna feel that stretch on the outer right shoulder. So it's a nice counter stretch for a lot of these heart openers we're doing. We're getting the back of the arm a little bit to the shoulder. And then let's switch and let's do the other side for a couple breaths. So we'll neutralize between sides, both arms along, forehead to the earth. And then take that left palm and tuck it under. Right arm reaches long. Back to center one more time. And then come all the way up. Let's do some hip circles. We're gonna go into a longer held posture. So let's just do some of those hip circles. You walk your palms a little forward of the shoulders and just roll your hips. A few big juicy circles, maybe three or four on each side. And then find your way to seated. I'm gonna find my blanket here for the next one, maybe even my blocks. Don't worry if you don't have them, you'll just go to your um, degree of ability. So seated forward fold, um, nice one for the whole back body. So we're stretching the whole back body. So I'm gonna place my blanket here if you're using one. I don't like lumps, so smooth out your blanket. And you're just going to sit right on the edge of it so you can see my hips are right on the edge, just the sitting bones are on it, and that spills my pelvis forward. It gives me that forward tilt with my pelvis. All right, so in yin yoga, this is known as caterpillar. So if you have tight hamstrings and you have another block or blanket, you can always place some blocks under there. Today, I just want to feel the full stretch. So I'm gonna draw my heart, that thymus that we tap, draw that area towards those big toes, and walk your palms forward. So nice and long spine here, especially if you have any low back challenges. Keep the spine long, you're still getting the stretch. You're probably feeling it in one of the target areas, which is in the back of the legs, maybe up into the hips and the glutes. Now, if you wanna keep going further, you would inhale and then exhale. Keep that spine long, inhale, walk those fingers forward. Keep your gaze on the toes, eyes on the prize. Now for you, maybe this is as far as you go, and maybe you just came an inch forward and you are feeling it and that's okay. It doesn't matter what your pose looks, looks like, it matters that you're feeling it in the target areas. And your target area, like I said, is that whole back body. I'm gonna get a little bit more today. This is one of the ones I can do. If you ask me to stretch my hamstrings, I'm probably gonna cry like a baby. So I'm not, I'm feeling this in the hamstrings, but more into the hips, in the back, in the calves. Oh, this is really a good one for me. My hamstrings are definitely feeling it, but not as bad as usual. So I've rounded in. So if your low back is, is inviting you to round in, you can round in. You can even let the head relax in. Sometimes I'll take a block if I'm not as flexible on a day and take it on a level. But just make sure you're not jamming your neck here. And then find your edge. Find your edge. That's first top go. And find stillness and hold it for a time. And pay attention to all the areas you're feeling it. And remember to remain in that stillness. It's not always easy. This is a simple practice, but it's not easy. We have to sit with ourselves for long periods of time, waiting for those deeper tissues to, to stretch and open. And a lot of times things come up, but that's how we grow and evolve. Just think of a baby bird pecking its way out of an egg or a seed. Um, breaking its way through the husks to grow. We have to go through the discomfort to see growth, to evolve, to get to that next level, that better place. So see if you can't just sit with what comes up, allow it to be, breathe through it.
know, you can hit the pause button here. Stay as long as you want. But to transition out, you're going to start to lift slowly. You're not going to sit straight up. Plant your palms, lengthen your spine long, and then walk yourself up all the way up. And we're going to rebound in Shavasana. So you're going to slowly release the blanket from underneath your hips. Bring yourself down as slow as you can. Bring yourself down. Allow the hips to fall open, the feet to fall open, shoulder blades rest on the earth. Notice the achiness dissipating. The heart open, the shoulders. Allow the space between the eyebrows to soften and open. Bring your gaze with your eyes closed, just bring your inner gaze to the space behind closed eyes. Notice any colors or patterns, maybe specks of light. The images pop up just like you're the observer. You don't have to react to anything. Maybe you even see just a soft grayness and that's okay too. Just remain still for about the next minute. Start to wiggle the fingers and toes, rotate the wrists and ankles. If a good morning stretch feels good, stretch the body long, point the fingers, point the toes and stretch. Draw the knees into the chest. Rock side to side a few times. And then roll to your right side. And then just roll all the way onto your belly. We're going to do a couple of shoulder openers to finish stimulating that thyroid, opening through the heart, the shoulders, the thymus mm -hmm. gland. So bringing your arms out to the side, like T, palms face down, you're resting on your right ear. You wanna to start to draw that left arm in, coming into bow tie, actually not bow tie, open wing, bow ties next. So you're gonna roll onto that right hip, draw the knees in. So your left arm, so I'm gonna do it this side just to show you what it looks like, um, but don't switch. I'm just gonna show you, so I'm keeping my arm in line with my shoulder, so it's open, all right? But I'm going to face you for the first one. So I'm gonna roll onto that right shoulder, keeping that right palm face down in line with my shoulder. Knees are drawn in, you can take that left palm and just press it into the earth or you can float it behind you and just allow it to rest there. Some people like to take that top leg and bend it up. You can do that. I just like to keep it in my shoulder and not anywhere else. Keep my knees one on top of the other and breathe and hold it for about a minute. But like I said, you always have that pause button so you can hold as long as feels good to you. And take a few of those nice deep breaths in and out the nose. Feeling this on the shoulder joint, opening through the shoulder. So you might be feeling it in the top of the chest, the front of the chest, the front of the shoulder. That's the biggest area you're going to feel it in. out and I just held that for about a minute you plant the left palm on the earth start to lengthen the legs long as you roll into your belly bring both arms by your side rest on either ear palms face up just to rebound between the sides notice the achiness notice as it dissipates don't push anything away notice everything without reacting Observer. Right. A little rebound there. 
we're gonna press ourselves up. Not going into Sphinx, but that's kind of where we start. Now we're gonna take that same arm, we just open the shoulder, the right arm, and we're gonna tuck it under. So the upper arm or the right upper arm is underneath the top of the chest. And then we're gonna roll, compress the upper body onto that upper arm. My palm is faced up and I'm gonna bend the left arm, placing my forehead on the left forearm. So internal rotation of that right shoulder now, the opposite of what you were just doing. Target area is still the shoulder, but now more the back, maybe the side. You might feel it in the upper traps. Maybe feeling it in the, down the side of the neck. Again, holding for as long as you like, but when you're ready to transition out, press that left palm, left forearm into the earth, and then slide that right arm out. And then once again, take a quick, just like three breaths, rebound. Just noticing how the right shoulder feels compared to the left. Notice how you've grown by stretching through the right shoulder. So just little notices of the changes that take place between the postures. Notice I needed that because I was really tight on the neck and the shoulder of the right side. All right, so let's do the other side. Coming into our open wings, so arms are at the T. This time your left shoulder's on the earth. Bend the right elbow, press the right palm into the earth, rolling onto your left side. Or externally rotating the left shoulder. Then you can place your right palm on the earth in front of you as you draw the knees in, or you can float the palm behind, the right palm behind, and let it rest there. And I think I'm gonna keep my arm up and breathe. As long as you like, I'm going to transition out, planting my right palm, lengthening my legs. I'm going to bring my arms down for a quick rebound. Notice the tingles or the energy flow through the left shoulder now. Transition into your half bow tie pose. Back up into that Sphinx pose. Slide that left arm up. Make sure the top of the chest is gonna land on the upper left arm. And then I didn't mention that on the other side, but if you like to have your head on the earth instead of your forearm, you can do that. I just like to keep my head and neck more in alignment. And for me, this works. So feeling the opposite stretch in the left shoulder. Notice if the shoulder's tighter than the other. 
today for me, and every day is different. I think my right side was tighter. And just breathe. Feeling real good, just go ahead and stay. But if you want to transition out, slowly draw that right palm to the earth, press up to release that left arm, and once again, just rebound between sides. And now notice if your shoulders feel more even after we stretch on both sides. Hmm. One of my favorite um, sequences is that shoulder um, half bow tie and open wing. Finish out the sequence, press up, all the way up. Find yourself in the seat. And if you have a blanket or towel, it's not necessary, but go ahead and find your blanket or towel. I'm gonna to take my yoga blanket and have another folded, so I want a little um, higher blanket. So that's gonna go under our hips. So transition all the way down to your back. Oh, maybe a little hug in the knees, rock side to side a couple times. And then you're going to plant the feet, lift, lift up. And you can also do this with a block under your sacrum too, but today I think you're just going to stick with a blanket. All right, and then bring your body long. So we're going to go into banana pose. Now, if you have your hips on the earth and nothing underneath, you can still do this pose. So I'm going to bring my shoulders to the earth, take my right foot off the right side of the mat, cross my left, left ankle over the right, and just switch pull my mat a little bit. All right, right foot off right side, left, Foot crosses over the right. And I love to take my upper body and bring it over to the right as well. You can keep your arms, shoulders on the earth. I love to reach up and over opposite elbows. So this is called a few things. It's called banana because you're a shape of a banana. It's called palm tree. If you ever see those palm trees at the beach, they go all the way up and curve. Palm trees grow coconuts and coconuts and bananas. I think that makes a nice daiquiri. I shouldn't be thinking like that right now. I should be thinking about how good this stretch feels all the way down the left side of my body. And breathe. Neutralize everything, even bringing those arms down by the side. Make sure your body's in alignment. And then when you're ready, the left foot goes off the left side of the mat, right ankle crosses over, wiggle that upper body over towards the left. Wherever it's comfortable for your arms, you're gonna go ahead and reach up and over again. Yeah. Creating that C shape on the opposite side. Feeling that stretch now through the right side.
slowly come back to center. Uncross the ankles. Shift everything back. If you need a little knees into the chest hug, go ahead and do that. And um, you can remain on your blanket or on your back, but I'm going to place a block underneath my sacrum for the next one. Coming into a little pontoon here. So once you feel stable in the hips there and the sacrum's on there, you can just stretch the body long here. Releasing the hip flexors, because that releases stretch. When we release the hips, especially these hip flexors, they hold a lot of stress and stress can wreak havoc on our immune system. So we want to make sure those hip flexors are nice and loose. If you're not feeling anything here, you can always shift the block to a higher level. I would not recommend the highest um, level just because the block is not stable. And what I'm talking about is if you had your block on this level, it's just too tippy. So I wouldn't do that. I would just keep it on two. You can also place two blocks in level two here if you want a more stable base. And then you can come into your pontoon. Now, if you're still not feeling anything here, a lovely way to deepen this stretch is to root the left heel on the earth and draw the right thigh in. Maybe you interlace. Now I am definitely feeling it in that left heel flexor. It feels really good. What I love about yoga is sometimes these poses are really uncomfortable with the stretches. They feel good. I mean, it just feels good to open these different parts of the body where we, we can get stagnant. And that's the opposite of what we're trying to do in yoga. Yin yoga is to create growth, evolution, change within the body, especially the physical body, but also the emotional and um, releasing the tension in the mind body. So see where you've grown today in your practice and, and every practice you do, and in life, see where you can hold for a time, sit with the discomfort, and watch the growth and the changes that happen. And sometimes if we sit with something and it's uncomfortable, we might have to let it go. And that's growth and evolution too. Not always easy. And I'm gonna release gently, drawing my navel to the spine, planting my left foot, neutralizing in the center, shifting that block if you need to. And then I'm gonna do the other side. So sending my right heel long, maybe both your legs are still long, you can stay there. But if you want that little deeper stretch, just draw that left thigh in. And I'm just going to adjust a little bit more until I find stillness, so finding my edge here. Here we go. Have that right heel on the earth. Just enough to get that left foot to the earth. Right foot comes to the earth. Slowly, slowly lift the hips up and come down one vertebra at a time. Spine is open. That was also a back bend. See that low spine. As soon as you land, knees draw in, release, rock side to side, massage out that back bend. Tuck the knees in. Maybe you lift your head up, squeeze yourself into a little ball, gazing at the navel, and inhale gently that back of the head back down. All right, let's get a twist in. So I'm gonna bring my arms out to the side. And actually what I'm gonna do, let's, let's change it up. Let's hug the knees into the chest and roll to your right. And your head's on the earth, if that's not comfortable, a block or a blanket under there. Stack the palms one on top of each, each other and take those left fingertips 
draw them up the right arm across the chest and out to the side coming into your twist. Notice how this feels. It's a twist that's the target area is the spine. The back doesn't like this so much you can always place a block or a blanket under that right knee. Make sure the shoulders are down. to the other side to draw the navel in roll all the way back over and then roll to your back hug the knees to the chest side to side a couple times and then roll all the way over to the left side stacking your palms take those right fingertips draw them up the inside of the left arm across your chest and then come out to your twist your gaze can be up or to the right. Turn the corners of your lips up. Create that inner smile. Know that you gave your physical, mental, and emotional bodies a great gift by doing your yoga practice. Today, focusing on building the immune system, releasing stress out of the body, and promoting our growth, our evolution, and the changes so we don't become stagnant. All right, and then slowly you can roll back over and roll to your back. Hug the knees into the chest. One more time, rock side to side, coming into a full happy baby pose. Hands, feet. I like my arms inside, drawing the tops of my thighs towards the earth. You can put a little flex in the toes and then draw the sacrum towards the earth, tucking the chin slightly towards the chest. Neutralizing the spine here. those knees into the chest, give yourself one more squeeze, and find your Shavasana, the magic pose that seals the whole practice in our body, so our deeper tissues rest, relax, cool from their stretches, they cool into the shape from our practice, so we want to give them that time to find that space, find that time just to cool down and remain in the shape we gave them in our practice. Stay here as long as you want. I'm gonna stay here for about a minute, but if you wanna stay here for five minutes or longer, hit your pause button and relax totally, letting go. Take a deep breath in through the nose. Exhale through the mat as you sink into your mat. Wrists, ankles, head and neck, and rock side to side. Keep 
I'm totally external, maybe stretching your body long three times. Big one and longest, deepest stretch. Inhale to the chest as you exhale. Roll to your right side. Rest in a fetal position just for a couple sips of relaxation. Acknowledge your body's response to the practice, welcoming all changes, all sensations. the left palm into the earth. Bring yourself up. Keep your eyes closed. Find a gentle seat, rooting the sit bones into the earth. Plant the palms face down. That's grounding. This is a grounding practice. Shoulders back and down. Nice long spine. Bring your hands to heart center one last time. Let's stimulate that thymus area. So just press the thumbs into the sternum, go up the right and then down the left. So you're creating a little pressure, thumb circles to the sternum area, up the right, down the left. Let's do that one more time. The light in me bows and honors to the light in you. Thank you for practicing with me. Namaste.